Hey everybody, Mr. Macintosh here, and this video is for you if you used OpenCore Legacy Patcher to install macOS Big Sur on your unsupported Mac and now see macOS Monterey is available for an upgrade. You might be thinking to yourself, can I actually install this? Well, the answer is yes, if you follow some very important instructions. I'm gonna show you how to download the latest version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher, install it, and configure it to your local hard drive, and then I'm gonna give you a full walkthrough on how to upgrade to macOS Monterey from macOS Big Sur. We've got a lot to cover, let's jump and get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do before we install the macOS Monterey update is to make sure OpenCore Legacy Patcher is updated to the latest version. So the first thing we can do is check to see what version we're on. We know OpenCore Legacy Patcher is already on our Mac, so we'll go into Macintosh hard drive, go into applications, and start up OpenCore Legacy Patcher here. And then at the very beginning, it's gonna show you the version that we're on. As you can see, the version on this Mac is 0.2.4. The problem is is that since 0.2.4, multiple versions have been released that include some very important macOS Monterey fixes in them, including the fact that Bluetooth wasn't working, wireless network wasn't working. So if you updated now, none of that stuff would actually be working at all. So the latest version has all those fixes in it and you will need those and they're required to be able to upgrade to macOS Monterey. So now that we know that we need to upgrade the application, we need to see what the latest version is. So let's go to the GitHub page here and then once you're on the GitHub page you can go over here to the releases and you can see well wait a minute the latest version is 0.3.1 so that's the one we're going to want to download to upgrade our application. So let's click on this and we'll be brought to the next page. We'll scroll down and then we want to download the TUI app. So we'll click on that once and it's going to download right into our downloads folder. To upgrade all we need to do is quit out of the app and then all we need to do is drag it from applications right over to applications and it'll ask us if we want to replace it and we do so we'll hit replace and now we'll double click on it and make sure that it updated to the latest version we'll click on open and there we go version 0.3.1. The thing is, it's a two-step process. Just because you have the latest version of the application doesn't mean the bootloader on the EFI partition that is used when you boot your Mac, that needs to be updated too with all the latest fixes that is inside this application. So all we need to do is build OpenCore again with the settings that we need for our Mac and then install them to our internal hard drive, reboot, make sure that everything is fine, then we can make the jump to Mac Monterey. So let's do that now. Before we begin, if this is your only Mac, I would fully recommend creating a USB installer. The reason is if anything goes wrong with this upgrade, then you'll have something to fall back on. Again, if you have only have one Mac, I would recommend building a USB installer. I'm going to put a link in the description on how to build a Mac OS Monterey USB installer with Verbos mode on in my previous video. If you got multiple Macs and you can just create a USB installer if you have trouble, don't worry about it. You don't even need to do that. Now, now that we have that out of the way, let's build the latest version of OpenCore and install it to our internal hard drive. All we need to do is check those patcher settings. So we'll click on number five and we want to check on the debug settings and verbose mode is off and we can leave that off. Again, most of the upgrades are going to run just fine. So we don't have to turn that on. We'll hook Q to quit. And then we want to check to see if the boot picker is selected on. So we'll click on number five for miscellaneous settings. And you can see number one, the boot picker is actually turned on. So we'll click that and we will turn Turn that off and that's currently false. I've gotten a lot of questions asking about Terascale 2 acceleration and the secure boot settings in the security settings in number two. Now keep in mind, if you have a 2011 or lower Mac that's not metal compatible, system integrity protection and secure boot need to be false. The good thing about the terminal version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher is it detects the version of Mac you're on and sets the settings for you. That's why we don't have to go in here and manually set these settings anymore. Anymore. So if you have a 2013 or 2014 Mac that you want to install Monterey on, these will be enabled by default and you won't have to worry about that. So hit Q to quit. And now we're back and ready to build OpenCore. We'll hit quit one more time. And now we'll click number one to build those settings to the temporary location right here. Enter to go back. And now we can install them on our internal hard drive. We'll click on number two here. And we'll click number zero for the internal hard drive. Number one for EFI and enter. We'll enter an administrator password and it's going to install to the internal hard drive and overwrite the current bootloader settings from 0.2.4. 
and it's done. Hit enter to, enter to continue. Now we're back at the menu, click Q to quit, and let's reboot to make sure everything's okay. All right, we're back. Let's log in. Now we have the latest version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher app, and we have the latest bootloader version, 0.3.1, on our internal hard drive, and now the Mac is fully ready to upgrade through system preferences to macOS Monterey. Now, before we begin and click upgrade now to go to macOS Monterey, make sure you have a backup of all your files. I recommend backing up all your files even for supported Mac users. Again, for most situations, the upgrade is gonna go just fine, but just in case of an emergency, you have all your files saved on a hard drive or an iCloud or whatever and time machine. Okay, now that our files are backed up and we're ready to upgrade, all we need to do is click on this upgrade now button. What it's gonna do is it's gonna contact the software update server and immediately start to download the full installer. Where it's gonna go is your applications folder when it's done. So once that finishes the entire download process, it'll actually be copied over to the applications folder and you'll see install macOS Monterey right in here. Now again, it's not gonna kick off automatically. What's gonna happen is, is a, a big menu window will come up that says install macOS Monterey, click to continue. So when you click on that upgrade now, it's not an automatic process and that's nice because it gives you a little bit of time to prepare before you actually kick off the process. Okay, the download is finished. All we need to do is click upgrade now. Sometimes automatically the installer pops up on the screen. If it doesn't, all you need to do is click on upgrade now again and you can see that the installer is automatically starting and it is in the applications folder. There it is. So now, as you can see, this is what will take you through the upgrade process. Real quick, before we do that though, I wanted to mention that if you're having any download issues in software updates, and there, there's been a lot of reported issues of sometimes, even for supported Macs, downloading the entire full installer of 12 gigs. You can go to my website and download the install assistant.pkg right from here. You click on this and it goes right into your downloads folder. And once you install that package, it puts the entire full installer into your applications folder, just like we see here. Again, if you're having download issues from software update. Now that we have macOS Monterey full installer, all we need to do is click on continue. Agree? Agree? Click continue. Type in our administrative password. And there it goes. It's gonna copy the full installer to a temporary location, and then it's gonna to reboot to the install. The install can take anywhere between a half hour and maybe 45 minutes to complete once we're back up into the operating system after this finishes. All right, our Mac OS Monterey upgrade from Big Sur is complete. Let's log in here and we'll have to go through a setup assistant. You can enable file vault disk encryption because it is fully compatible with Open Core Legacy Patchup and click on continue. And remember, it's gonna be a little bit slow right now. That's because we have to reinstall the post volume graphics acceleration patches because they were overwritten by the upgrade. Now, before we do that, remember, if you have a 2012 or newer Mac, you have a metal graphics card and you do not have to install any of the patches, you are totally done. Let's go into Open Core Legacy Patcher because we gotta install those post volume patch. We'll go applications to Open Core, open it up, and then we'll click on number three to install the post volume patch. Number one to go. And click on yes. And it's gonna download and install. Enter to continue. And an administrator password. Enter to cache rebuild. Enter to continue snapshotting. Enter to continue. We are done. All we need to do now is to quit out of the OpenCore Legacy Patcher application and reboot our Mac. Okay, we're back up, let's log in. And there we have it, a successful upgrade from macOS Big Sur using OpenCore Legacy Patcher to macOS Monterey. We did it. If you have any questions about this process, let me know in the comments and I'll answer them. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up or a share, I'd really appreciate it. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, click on the subscribe button. And if you wanna see more macOS Monterey videos, click on the playlist in this window. If you wanna be able to support the channel, I got a brand new Patreon that you can join. I already have three patrons. We've got the Apple Ninja, Swift Goose, and Apple Cheese Boy. I really appreciate your support, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.